Okay, I uh, brought this wonderful gold coin here. A wonderful piece of gold. I don't know what you guys think when you see gold. You think, I want to have this. Maybe you think it's fake. Maybe you think it's chocolate. I don't know why you think that. <laughs> well, I'm a scientist. When I look at this piece of gold, I think, gee, this is strange. Why is this here? Why is there a, un a gold in the universe? It shouldn't be here. Why would I think such a strange thing? Well, if you look at the history of the universe on this timeline here, everything started with the Big Bang on the left, and we're now 13.7 billion years later on the right side uh, sitting here in this room. And if you look at the periodic table of the elements at the time of the Big Bang, it looked like this. Quite simple. I bet all of you think now, gee, I should have taken high school chemistry back then. <laughs> You'd have all gotten A's. Everybody can memorize three elements. Today, 13.7 billion years later, it's a little bit more complicated. There are all these elements, including gold. So something has happened between the time of the Big Bang and today. We figured out, and, and maybe now, I hope, if you look at this piece of gold or at the gold ring on your finger, you see it also with slightly different eyes. It's one of the big uh, mysteries of the universe. Well, we figured out some of it. Turns out the first 30 elements in the periodic table, we know they're made in stars. If you go outside, you look in the night sky, up there, elements are being created right now. Every oxygen and carbon atom in your body has been made in stars. But stars only make tiny amounts of heavy elements like gold. So where is all the gold coming from? We don't know. It's an open question. Now scientists have come up with some crazy ideas. And uh, one of them involves neutron stars. So I'm going to explain what a neutron star is. Imagine the sun, 300,000 times more massive than the Earth and much bigger. And imagine you could shrink the sun all the way down to the size of the Earth. It's pretty crazy, pretty compact thing there. But imagine you're not done. You keep shrinking the sun further all the way down to the size of East Lansing, just a few miles across. That's a neutron star. It's the most compact form of matter. If you, if you scoop up a tablespoon of neutron star matter, it is extremely heavy. I, I, I wanted to come up with some comparison. So um, the, the heaviest everyday object I could think of was an aircraft carrier. <laughs> Those are pretty heavy. So a tablespoon of neutron star matter weighs the equivalent of 25,000 aircraft carriers. So it's pretty crazy stuff. But it's perfect to make gold. How does it work? Well, those neutron stars, each of the size of East Lansing, are floating around the galaxy, and sometimes they come in pairs, and what happens then is shown in this computer simulation. So the two neutron stars orbit each other, they get closer and closer, and eventually they're going to touch. And when they touch, material gets extremely hot, billions and billions of degrees, and the two neutron stars merge into an even more compact object, a black hole, there it is. But there's all this other stuff out there, all this neutron star stuff that's ejected into space. And that's where we think the gold is made. So the idea is that the stuff gets out into space, new solar systems form, new planets form out of it, and then people walk around on those planets and they dig in the ground and they find the gold that has been made in that neutron star collision. And the idea is that our planet, the Earth, is, is one of those planets made of neutron star stuff. Now, how, why do we think there's gold made here? Well, the computer simulation includes a very detailed calculation of all the nuclear transformations that happen during the collision. So on this chart here, each square is an atomic nucleus. A row corresponds to an element, and the colors indicate how much stuff is there. Oops. I'm sorry. I think it's not working. Okay, anyways, imagine 
Imagine these colors are moving up. And you see on the upper right side, I marked the gold. Eventually, gold will produce by these nuclear transformations. Elements are created, destroyed all the time. And uh, in that red circle up there, that's where the pathway of nuclear transformations is established that uh, creates the heavy elements and creates the gold. But this is all computer simulations. How would we, how would we know that this is actually true? Well, there are only two options. So option one is we take a spaceship and we just fly to the next merging neutron star and we dig in and we take a sample. I told you it's billions of degrees, so not such a good idea. The alternative is to do this whole thing in a laboratory and see whether that actually works. Now, we can't get two neutron stars in the laboratory, um, but we can simulate some of, we can, we can restage some of the nuclear transformations. We cannot restage the whole sequence, but we can restage each little step going from one element to the next. And then we can restage the next step and so on, and then we can piece that information together and we can work out whether in colliding neutron stars there's actually gold made or not. Um, now, there are two problems to that. So problem number one is those nuclei that we need to study, they're so-called rare isotopes. They only live for fractions of seconds, like the length of the sound. So that's how much time you have to do your experiment. Uh, not a lot of time, but we've worked out how to do that uh, at places like the Cyclotron Lab here at MSU. The other challenge is that nobody has actually ever been able to produce any of these rare isotopes in this red circle. They're extremely difficult to make. So what do we do? We throw up our arms. Sorry, can't figure it out. No, we're scientists. We just invent and build the most powerful rare isotope production machine in the world that for the first time will be able to produce the same atomic nuclei that are otherwise only created when these neutron stars collide. And that machine is actually being built right now Right next door, it's called the Facility for Isotope Beams. And if you step out after the show, you can look across the street and there's a construction site. So how does uh, FRIB, that's how we call it, how does FRIB produce these rare isotopes? Well, we take a heavy nucleus that has been made for us actually in some colliding neutron stars a long time ago, uh, like uranium, and we accelerate it to about half the speed of light. There it goes. And then we smash it on a piece of carbon, and it breaks into pieces. And the hope is that sometimes one of these pieces is one of the nuclei that we want to study. Now, the chance for that to happen is ridiculously small. But <laughs> AFRIP is going to do these collisions about a trillion times a second. And so once a minute, once an hour, Maybe only once a day, an interesting rare isotope is made, and it's then separated from the rest and sent to the experiment, and then we have that much time to the experiment and measure how it transforms from one element to the next. And um, then we do this for all the transformations that we think happen in these merging neutron stars, and then once uh, the experiments are completed, they will start in 2022, uh, we will finally see whether colliding neutron stars produce gold or not. Maybe we'll find they don't. Um, we can test other ideas like exploding stars. Maybe we find that nothing works. We have to come up with some completely new idea. But for the first time, we'll have a chance to actually figure out uh, um, this, this question. Now, Efrit will answer many questions about the origin of the elements and what holds nuclei together. But there will also be a direct benefit to society. FRIB is a machine that can produce any rare isotope you ever would like to study. And so it will make isotopes that will help develop new materials. It will produce isotopes for medical research to develop new medical cures, uh, medical diagnostics. But the important thing is a facility and a machine like FRIB only exists because of the scientists and because of their will to really go and figure things out and to ask questions about reality, like about this gold coin, for example. Thank you.